Update. Am I the a-hole for exposing my parents when they forgot about me on their wedding? Original post. I know this seems like a weird situation, but I just feel so angry and depressed that I feel the need to vent even if no one is listening. So I-17 female was recently forgotten about on the day of my parents' wedding. My parents have been together for about 25 years, but they never actually got married. That's why when my dad, 50 male, proposed to my mother, 49 female, on their anniversary, which they have always celebrated on the date my mother found out she was pregnant with my eldest sister even though they were already together before, everyone, including me, was elated and celebrated the occasion with great joy. This happened all the way back in February. They immediately jumped into wedding planning, deciding very early on a small event in Hawaii with just the closest family and friends for an intimate ceremony. Almost immediately, my mother asked my sister, 25 female, to be her maid of honor, and my dad asked my brother, 22 male, to be his groomsman. I wasn't surprised or offended by this. My sister had always been a mommy's girl, and they both enjoyed spending time with each other, shopping and socializing, so they had a very close bond. The same goes for my father and brother. They always played football together and messed around with cars. My father even trained my brother's team for a while in middle school. Dad had always left me as the odd one out. I tried to insert myself in my family's hobbies and groups that they had within our home, but was always rebuffed. Maybe they could sense that my interest on their activities wasn't all that genuine, or maybe they just didn't care. Either way, I was used to being the last and least important member of my family. Mom had sis and dad had bro. My parents had each other and my two siblings were closer to each other than they were ever to me, leaving me very lonely and isolated in my own home. During the preparation for the wedding, initially it was suggested that I be the flower girl, but my sister thought that role would be more appropriate for a daughter of three female, so that idea was quickly tossed away. Later on, my maternal grandmother suggested that I might write a poem or do a little bit of speech during the ceremony. But both my parents refused because they wanted the wedding to be low-key and they didn't think a cheesy and sappy speech would fit their vision, their literal words. I was still okay with all of this, even though it hurt to know I would be the only member of the family to not actually be part of the wedding party or have any role at all on the day. As the day approached, my parents and siblings got more and more cut up on all the wedding planning. I noticed my mom didn't invite me dress shopping, and that's whenever they would have discussions about the venue or the event, I was left out. So I decided to see if they would realize that I wasn't being involved at all and kept quiet, waiting for them to ask me something, anything, about the wedding. But that never happened. The wedding was set for three weeks ago, the end of August. The day before the departure, my mother casually asked if I had my luggage ready because we couldn't be late on the airport. I bluntly told her that I hadn't prepared anything. She got confused for a second and then snapped at me for not being prepared. I then asked if I even had a ticket, and her face went pale. Yep, they hadn't even bought me a ticket, and I'm not even sure if I had a room or any accommodations once there. Even though I was the only person in my family without a stable income, I work as a part-time babysitter. My parents had bought first-class tickets for my siblings and a couple other friends that were attending the wedding but had forgotten me. My mom told me not to make a big deal out of it and that they can just find me a low-cost ticket last minute from a cheap airline. But I just replied by asking her, Then what? Do I even have a dress for the ceremony? She went with sister to buy hers and all the other female guests months ago, but I wasn't included. That's when my father came in and just told me to suck it up and that I've never been a girly girl, so I could just wear whatever. I got mad at this, because even though I'm not the most feminine girl in the planet, I would have loved to be included in such an important part of my parents' wedding. And it was about the fact that I was excluded for literally everything that had been going on for months. We all got into a fight with them calling me entitled and accusing me of making myself small intentionally so they would forget me. Like that is a valid excuse for ignoring a child. They ended up telling me that if I was going to keep this attitude, I might as well skip the whole thing together. To which I responded with a defiant, fine, and went to my room. Next morning, they all left for Hawaii without me. The ceremony was really small, but they all posted loads of pictures on Insta and Facebook about how perfect and magical that whole week was being. 
People realized quickly that I wasn't in any of the photos and asked my parents why, to which they replied that unfortunately I had caught COVID before the trip and had to stay behind. My blood boiled at this. I don't know why this was a straw that broke the camel's back for me, but it was. I decided to take a COVID test and published a picture of myself holding the negative test and captioned it, not sick at all, just forgotten. I tagged everyone that had questioned my absence from the trip and the wedding in the picture and, for good measure, also every person invited to it. I also wrote in the comments about how my parents had literally forgotten about anything to do with me until the day before parting and how they actually uninvited me. Most people were on my side and others couldn't believe it and thought there must be something more to the story than what I was saying. But one thing is for certain, I completely ruined my parents' wedding and their day was overshadowed by my confession. At first, I felt quite satisfied with myself for standing up on my own, but after a barrage of messages from my family, calling me every name in the book, and later when they came back, them furiously attacking me for my immature actions and my spoiled behavior, my pride deflated quickly, and I began to feel awful. I hate my family, and I hate being in this house, but I'm a minor and can't leave just yet. I do feel like I could have handled the situation better though, and now I feel so depressed that I'm second-guessing everything I did, from not speaking up before to the way I exposed them. I also feel guilty for the lack of connection between all of my family and me, and maybe I could have done more? Am I the a-hole for ruining my parents' wedding when they forgot about me? Now for the top comments before reading the update. Not a-hole. How could you have ruined a wedding they had exactly as they planned? You weren't invited, didn't attend, and didn't have any effect on the planning or details. Could Opie be an affair child? She is quite a few years younger than her siblings and it would explain a lot. I am the now adult child of a narcissist. Some parents really do suck this hard, even if the child is 100% their bio kid. Not saying she isn't an affair child, but figuring that out at this point won't help anything. The parents are just mad that their neglect is now public, so they are trying to shame Opie into recanting her version of events. That, plus they want to punish her. Best of luck, Opie. You deserve better. I have a similar family dynamic to you, Opie, although I'm the oldest. I wasn't asked to go on family vacations. My birthday was always forgotten about. If my mom and younger siblings wanted to go out to eat for family dinner while I was at work, they would leave and not say a word to me. Not a hole. Don't let them make you feel guilty. As soon as I could, I moved out. Didn't say a word to anyone in my immediate family, just packed a bag and was gone. I'm no contact with everyone but my little sister and even she's on probation with regards to visits and hanging out. I'm sorry for you and that we are on the same boat. I want to move out, but I have no place to go now. I had a summer job besides babysitting and I've been saving up some money, but I live in a very expensive city and I need another job before I can plan anything. Be strong. Don't let them get under your skin. Even if you have to get roommates or move in with a friend, leave as soon as you're comfortable with finances. There are Facebook groups and such for looking for roommates, especially in high cost of living areas. I know that's what I should be doing. I do have a friend that is moving to a studio apartment near our college, but I don't have a job at the moment, and I don't want to be a burden to her. She and I are close, so I'm sure she would offer for me to move in with her, but I don't want to be a burden. Also, I don't have a job at the moment, so I couldn't pay rent. So that's something else I need to do at the moment. Now for the update few days later. Hi everyone! I wanted to write an update earlier, but I'm still kind of a mess at the moment. But I've figured since my post had such an overwhelming response and so many people commented and sent me messages that I should write about the latest developments. First of all, let me start by thanking all that commented on my post and shared their own experiences or point of view on my situation. Thank you so much. A few days ago, I could barely find the energy to get out of bed and my family's comments had made me really believe that I was guilty for all that had passed. But after seeing the responses to my post and all the support you guys were giving me, I felt somewhat reaffirmed in my actions and feelings towards my family. I'm still fighting the feelings of guilt and depression, but whenever I start to spiral, I think on how much this community of strangers has had my back, and I try to calm myself down with your words. 
Thanks to your input and advice, I finally decided to call my grandma and tell her the full story. Just to clarify a point before going on, my grandma, 77 female, did not attend the wedding. She lives several states away and has mobility issues, so she doesn't travel anymore. We went to visit her around Easter, and that's when she commented that I might read a poem at the ceremony. But that was the last time I saw her in person before all this. She's always been very loving to me and has called out my parents in the past for their favoritism. But it's hard for her to play a more active role in my upbringing since she lives so far and I'm always worried about bothering her due to her age and health condition. She had a minor stroke a few years back and is now back to normal. But I still worry. Anyway, I called her and laid out everything that had happened with the wedding and how my parents didn't even buy me a ticket to go with them. She came to the same conclusion that most commenters did when I told her that, that it was simply impossible that they had forgotten and that they did it on purpose. I cried on the phone with her, laying out how I was feeling, how this has been going on forever, how I feel in the aftermath and most importantly about my need to get out. She was extremely sweet and comforting to me and told me that I had nothing else to worry about because she had my back 100% and told me to take it easy but make plans for my future and that she'd help me. After that conversation, which lasted about two hours, I felt better and I decided to listen to her and start moving to figure something out for the next school year. I have a friend who is going to lease a studio next to our future campus. She has a great relationship with her parents, but she has five younger siblings and wants to be more independent, so that's why she decided to move out. I asked her if I could move in with her temporarily and that I would pay her rent as soon as I got a job. She immediately accepted and told me not to worry about rent or anything else until I was in a better position. And we had a good cry together when I told her all about my parents' wedding incident. So this all happened a couple days ago and I was planning on doing the update then but my grandma called my parents and siblings to lecture them about how they were treating me. My brother just sent me a text afterwards with a half-hearted apology, saying that he didn't know I wasn't included and that he just thought I wouldn't have fun on a trip and then I posted a picture just to create drama. My sister, on the other hand, berated me and told me that I kept trying to make public my own problems and pitting them on my family when they are all innocent. It has been weird with my parents ever since they came back from the trip and at first they berated me and were furious with me and after that we've just been ignoring each other. After my grandma called them, they came into my room telling me that if I wanted to put this whole issue to rest, I should shut up about it and that this could all had already blown over if only I had kept my mouth shut. I just asked them to leave my room and then I called my grandma again to tell her what had gone down. She then told me that she and my uncle had bought plane tickets to come down to see me. This was something that I was actually scared about because my grandma's health is not the best and this kind of effort is a lot for her and I know how complicated it is for her to get on a plane. So I tried to dissuade her from coming and told her everything would be okay. But she wouldn't listen and told me that she was long overdue a conversation with my parents and that she wanted to see me. I'm stressed for her and I feel again like I forced her to take a long uncomfortable trip because of me and that maybe I should have dealt with this myself. I do want to see her and I wish for nothing more than to hug her right now, but I'm worried about her. At least my uncle, mom's older brother, is coming with her but I hope she doesn't exhaust herself or nothing happens to her because that would break me. They arrive tomorrow and have not informed my parents of their trip. My grandma asked me to keep it until she gets here. I hope she is able to make my parents see the mistake in their actions or at the very least, help me break the news to them that I'm moving out very soon and I plan on being no contact with them. I don't know, I'm worried about her having to do so much for me and bothering her, but I also appreciate and love her so much for doing all this for me. Your grandma's amazing. It's so great that she has your back and is willing to stand up to your parents. And don't worry about her making the trip. She sounds like a strong and determined woman. Plus, you deserve to have someone on your side who will fight for you. Keep us updated on how everything goes with your family. And remember, you have a whole community here to support you. Best of luck with your future plans. She should use her oxygen tank to beat some sense into them. I have a feeling she will do something if she is having health issues but is making the trip. It's definitely to bang some heads together. Last story. 
Am I the a-hole for refusing to pay for my sister's wedding after I found out she lied about her finances? So, I, 28 female, recently found myself in a really tough spot with my little sister, 25 female, and I'm struggling to figure out if I'm in the wrong here. A little backstory. My sister has been planning her wedding for over a year and I've been saving up to help her out financially. Our family isn't wealthy, so we all pitched in a portion to make her dream wedding come true. So, approximately three months ago, she told me that her wedding budget was way over the limit and she asked if I could give her an extra $10,000 to cover costs and two $5,000 payments. Of course, this is a lot of money, lol. So naturally, I was a bit hesitant, but she's my little sis, so of course I wanted to support her. Long story short, I agreed to help, even though it meant dipping into my own savings. She promised that this would be the last of her financial requests and assured me that her budget was tight but manageable. Fast forward to last week, I found out through a mutual friend that my sister actually had saved up a significant amount of money on her own and had been misrepresenting her financial situation to our immediate family, me, mom and dad, who are all pitching in. Before anyone asks me if I am sure, yes, I am. I know this, as part of the money I gave her was to help cover hotel costs for guests, normal in my culture for anyone wondering. I'm mentioning this because it was through a mutual friend I found out rooms per night in this hotel were actually $110, but in other conversations with me, she told me it was $200. A big difference. She also told my mom and I that her and her fiancé are not having a honeymoon to save on costs. Turns out, that's not true. As it was found out, she sent pictures of flight reservation to Fiji on her girls' group chat. An extremely expensive location. It is very clear her plan was to use the extra money to fund her lavish honeymoon and to splurge on some high-end wedding accessories that weren't budgeted for. When I confronted her, she admitted to exaggerating the financial strain to get more money from me and others. I was obviously furious. I feel like she took advantage of my generosity, and now I'm rethinking whether I should still help with the remaining wedding costs. She's been begging me to reconsider, but I can't get over the betrayal. My family's divided, some think I'm being too harsh and should just overlook it, as they are saying it's her wedding and it's not nice to ruin things last minute, while my friends and husband agree that she crossed a line. I don't want to be the villain in this story, but I also can't shake the feeling that she needs to face the consequences of her actions. So, am I the a-hole for refusing to pay the remaining $5,000 for my sister's wedding after discovering she lied about her finances? Now for the top comments. Not the a-hole. Your family is correct in saying it's her wedding and it's not nice to ruin things last minute. But you are not the one ruining things. It's her lies and her leeching. Why should you dip into your savings when it's not your wedding? Your savings have a purpose, and that does not include sponsoring a Fiji honeymoon. Also, divorce yourself from the attitude that she's little. She is a grown adult. What is her future husband paying for if you are all paying for the wedding and honeymoon? Cancel the honeymoon. I'm sure that's $5,000. Problem solved. Tell her you lied when you said you'd give her $10,000. You're exaggerating. Sister needs a sit-down discussion. Make her explain to everyone how much money she hid. No one will give her anything more, and she will repay the value of what she hid to those who donated it. This is basically fraud. It is not something you let go. It's paying for a holiday, not surgery. She needs to give everyone a groveling apology.